categorically, there's nobody else you want to kind of get in behind or go into battle with than Ridley Scott in a film like this. This is his wheelhouse. This is where he's, like, he can do anything, but this is what he does, I think, better than anybody else. I mean, if you don't have the, the, the faith or the backing of your director, there's no point in even starting. But I think he knew that this was new for me, and I think he uh, allowed me to feel the faith that he had, which is also a skill in and of itself. So for that, I'm... The, even the opportunity, I'm utterly grateful, but also the kind of support and the, the trust is just phenomenal. And I feel it from him not only then, but now as well. What I find pretty spectacular about this cast is that we've all got such different strengths. You know, you've got Denzel, who's the best in the game at what he does. You've got Pedro, you've got Connie, who's returning 25 years on. You've got Fred, who's just like the biggest nerd for acting that I've ever come across, which I, I adore the guy. You've got Joe Quinn. We've all got a very specific set of skills, but the thing that we have in common is our love for Ridley Scott and our love for this film. Size, scope, attention to detail, heart, pain, big, love, and gives the actor the opportunity to soar. It's a great ensemble, you know, he, he, he put together a lot of theater actors and uh, there were no stars, there were no, you know, just good actors doing, doing, doing our job. Too big, it's too, I couldn't believe it, I was like, it was, I'd never been in a movie like this and uh, I mean, I've never been on a red carpet like this. I mean, this is our budget for most of the movies I've made. In fact, I'm stealing some of the sets. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, they're a fantastic cast. All of them are brilliant and uh, had a good time. Fantastic. This film is, you know, a sequel to one that's 25 years ago. So the, the great thing about it is, from my point of view, is I'm kind of amazed and delighted that we're able to make a, a sequel. Paul I saw doing a, a charming show called Normal People and I tend to when I'm watching stuff I tend to look at the incoming not the outgoing. I'm, I'm an outgoing. So I watch incoming because you get all the new talent and I was engaged with Paul and the, his lady partner and that was really terrific. So I binge on eight hours of Normal People thought this is the guy. I mean, it's kind of surreal, really. It's surreal. Um, it's been such a, an incredible privilege and um, a privilege to work with such amazing people and also a privilege for me to get to tell Lucilla's story, what happened to her after that day in the arena at the end of the first film, what, what happened, you know? And it's like getting to tell that story is amazing. He's already a CinemaScope type of guy, right? But now it's really big. Now it's IMAX size now, right? And I don't know. I think he'll probably do the next one for that round screen, like where you're completely immersed. You know, I wouldn't, I would, I would not be surprised. First of all, like working with Ridley is like to enter into like this super collaborative experience. Like somebody who not only uh, uh, likes this, he expects you to bring your game and like anything that you've got as ideas, he wants to hear it. Uh, and I guess even if you didn't want to hear it, I would certainly offer it. <laughs> He's just basically upped the spectacle even more and just made it even more huge and crazy. Like I don't think we would have been able so much to do a fight scene with a, with a rhinoceros on the first one, but this one we do. You will be entertained. There are battle sequences in this movie that he tried to put in the first one that he's been thinking about and perfecting in his mind for over 20 years now. I mean, the movie lives with Ridley Scott. It's been wild. I mean, we've truly traveled the world. Uh, being able to meet so many people and share this film with so many people, it's, it's, it's a blessing to make a movie, bar none, just to make a movie, it's a blessing if it gets made. To make one that so many people are so excited about that we get to share in such a massive way, it's like a hundredfold. I think you will be entertained. 
you know, it's, it's a phenomenal experience. First of all, you know, Ridley Scott is my hero. And to work with him and see just how he could pull so many elements together, it was a remarkable experience. He's a force, and, and I was just impressed with his ability to sort of every single day come in with so much energy, keep, I mean, there were like 11 cameras uh, on at the same time. He could keep each beat in line for the entire day, edit it, come back and do it again the next day. Remarkable. I would say I feel incredibly lucky. This doesn't happen all the time, so I'm just taking every beat of it in. You will be entertained. Well, because he's the master of the universe, past, present, and future, so he does it all. And um, the canvas is so big, um, the world of ancient Rome, I think he's one of the, you know, if not the only director in the world who could handle the, that size of um, canvas because he's, a, he's an artist as well. He paints still, That's, I think he's true love, but he also likes working with 12 cameras at the same time and only does a couple of takes with them. Um, he's the maestro. Well, the scope is, it's, it's huge. But you know, it is at heart, it's a personal story. It's, a, I mean, uh, Lucius is being pulled towards his mother. And um, musically, I was able to make a theme for Lucius that when you hear it, there's a little fluty thing, a high ancient flute. It's almost as if he's being drawn towards this woman who turns out to be his mother. But uh, so it's a, it's a personal story. It's, uh, it has emotion, but it is, yeah, he, he, these, some of these action sequences are, are pretty huge. He's the only possible tour guide that the audience should ever have to take them to ancient Rome. We did it the first time. I thought of all of the audience in the bus. Ridley's in front. He's got the microphone. He's your tour guide to ancient Rome at work once. We thought, we got to come back to ancient Rome. And then it took us 25 years to find the right road there, but we did. These movies have to be a mirror to our world or they don't work. They can't stay in the period. So how about this? You get a billionaire who's buying his way into power, manipulating. I mean, it feels very contemporary. There, uh, as Lucy says, the reason it took us 25 years is we had to wait for Paul to be born. Trust Ridley. Truly a once-in-a-lifetime gathering of talent. Um, only Ridley Scott could pull off such a, a huge feat. Um, we had a, a long and epic shoot last year in Malta and Morocco, and thankfully, uh, even through two strikes, everybody stuck with us, and uh, all our friends and partners at, at Paramount, and uh, yeah, hopefully the results speak for themselves. Well, he made a pretty good first film, um, and then 24 years on, he's coming back to the Coliseum, and I think that is a blessing for everybody who loves movies and loves the cinema, and obviously we're all trying to fight to keep the cinema great and spectacle, you know, is important these days. So I think Rid, Rid's one of the five directors in the world that can make movies at this level, isn't he? So the perfect, you know, who, who better to do it? The scope and the scale uh, is enormous. I mean, that's really the word to use. We built half of the Coliseum in Malta. Ridley absolutely loves doing things practically. Um, so a lot of the things you see are in camera, of course, with some great visual effects as well. But it really was about making sure everybody feels that they're in Rome, that if you can live and breathe every part of the Roman Empire here in the Colosseum, out of the Colosseum, sharks, rhinos, baboons, decadent banquets, whatever you like in movies, there is something here for you. Uh, he, it's his world, you know, and we're all living in it. He created it, you know. We're certainly all living it in the in the form of this movie, but uh, but he created it, and it's it's his vision, you know. It's his uh, it's his universe, both visually and probably in terms of themes and stuff like that as well. So I mean, there's no question that he's the only one. Uh, for us, obviously, it was a big challenge because, no spoilers, but it's a, the previous movie, everybody died at the end, so there was nobody left to bring back. So we really had to reinvent it, you know, kind of a whole new chapter, a whole new story 25 years out. And so, uh, you know, we wound up almost going to square one uh, in terms of telling something that was completely, could stand on its own. I can say in, qual in qualified terms, it's even bigger than the first one in terms of the scale of what they built 
in Malta. You know, I mean, so many movies these days are green screen, you know, where it's all just actors with green dots all over their face and they're in front of whatever. But in this, like, it's all there. Like, he built everything. He built, he built the world, like, physically. And I think it really makes a difference in terms of what this movie feels like and how you experience it that no, none, no other effects green screen kind of movie can parallel.